I think that anyone who knows me on a personal level is fully aware that I love puppets and stop motion films. Don't ask me how I got this way, I'm not sure of it myself. But when I was on the hunt for something to watch and uh, content for this channel, I uh, found the cover of this movie that was just a close-up of a still of a cheesy looking puppet, so you know I had to watch it. Seeing that this version of Hansel and Gretel is from 1954 just sealed the deal for me. As I've said in my previous video, the stuff I'm going for is the kind of movies you'd find accidentally in the bargain bin at a half-price books or a garage sale. The less current and less well-known it is, the more on board with it I am. The movie is very clearly old and didn't transfer well onto digital. It's blurry and faded and hard to make out the backgrounds. For any of you who have watched The Lighthouse, the filming for Hansel and Gretel is done in that tight box ratio so you know it's old. From what I could tell of all the sets though, it's really pretty and elaborate. This version of Hansel and Gretel is an opera, so I don't know if they decided to animate an actual existing opera or if this is just its own thing. But uh, fair warning, if you aren't into musicals, you probably will not like this movie. The animation is good, it really is. It's smooth, but the music is weird. The narrator sounds good, and we're introduced to Susie the Goose and Ginger the Bear, who you better get used to because they're there for the entire movie. They don't speak though, they just exist and provide, as far as I could tell, no developments to the plot. Susie the Goose looks normal enough, but Ginger the Bear is abnormally thin, except for a thick set of cheeks. And I mean, dummy thick. Ginger has some difficulty moving due to the fact that they're dragging their wagon that hard. The animals enter the cottage, so we get to a good look at the main characters and the human faces are these creepy mix between Monkey and the Who's from Jim Carrey's version of the Grinch. Gretel's voice is way too high. And she gives Susie the Goose a bonnet that looks more like a sock. Hansel has a New York accent. The sound He sounds like the mouse from American Tale. You know the one. His name is Philly. That one. Apparently both Hansel and Gretel are voiced by Constance Brigham, who was on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, and I would never have guessed they were played by the same person. But let's talk about the plot of this film before anyone gets too bored. Hansel is getting... On, is going on about how he wants to play instead of making brooms and clean. By the way, their father makes brooms for a living. Not a woodcutter, which sounds just as useless, but a broom maker. They seem surprised that they're starving, I don't know. Gretel wants Hansel to get back to work. Lest they anger their mother. But then literally moments later, Hansel's like, but I want to dance. And Gretel's like, dance? Oh yes, let's. And flakes out on your chores because she's useless and dumb. So the kids, the bear, the goose, and all the furniture start to dance. Oh yes, you heard me. The furniture starts dancing and the furniture also has faces. I was horrified. I would expect the kids to be concerned, surprised, or upset by their <laughs> demonically possessed tables, but they seem to think this is a normal everyday occurrence, which gives me way more questions than answers. Also, during the dance scene, you can see Ginger and Susie making out, so that makes me question some more things, too. Well, naturally, their mother gets back, and she's mad. She accidentally knocks over the pitcher of milk, and she blames the kids, and throws them into the woods to pick berries. I crossed out the fact she blamed the kids in my notes, and then rewrote it again, because she didn't directly blame them, but when the dad returns home, she does say that she knocked it over, and that they made her do it. So, yeah. The dad returns home, he sings a lot, which isn't so bad because he's got a great set of pipes, but he's obsessed with brooms. He's all happy because he's bringing groceries home because he made a great broom sale. And his story cracked me up because he's going on about how he sold brooms because he stood outside a wedding and belted out his broom sales pitch. And I just imagined the villagers were just like, crap, the annoying broom guy's back. Just buy something, she'll shut up. Mom goes for the groceries and she's really excited about the coffee, which I also had a laugh at. But then the dad's like, where are the kids? And she's like, I told them to go to the woods to pick berries. Well, the dad's like, but there's a witch in the woods who will turn our kids to gingerbread and eat them. And then proceeds to spend more time singing about how they need to go into the woods to rescue them than, I don't know, actually going to the woods to rescue them. The fact that the mom is so confused and horrified is weird to me. Like, how could you have lived here for all this time and only just now heard about the witch? 
Your kids are like 10. You've been here a while. So they run into the woods eventually. And Gretel and Hansel and Susie the Goose and Ginger the Bear are picking berries. They have a nice song where they imitate the cuckoo bird, which I thought was nice. And Gretel sings a song to the bear about the bear. So you get two pointless songs in a row. Then they realize they're lost and Gretel freaks out. I love Hansel, but Gretel is whiny and dumb. And in this, I couldn't stand her. Night falls and they meet a random man in night clothes who apparently is the Sandman and they just follow him because they're idiots. He's especially suspicious because he refuses to let Susie and Ginger follow them. He, like, makes them sleep elsewhere. It's so weird. Then he pretty much roofies the kids and leaves. <laughs> There's a weird angel choir dream segment that I feel like a lot of old cartoons have. And that goes on for a while. And I swear, one of the angels gives Gretel a gift and I never ever saw her use it or notice it once the entire movie. Then the angels watch the kids sleep which I'm sure is meant to be a comforting thought, but I was not into it at all. When the kids wake up, the birds are singing, the butterflies are flitting, and the way they do the bird song and stuff is through sopranos, which I thought was kind of nice. Then the tree the kids were sleeping under suddenly turns into the gingerbread house, and the kids are like, "Oh, sweet, that's something to not be worried about at all. And Ginger is, not, is into it too, but Susie isn't having it and has to be coaxed in. While Hansel and Gretel pig out on the house, Ginger and, the, and Susie find a ladder and peace out as soon as the witch arrives because they're the only ones with sense or self-preservation, I suppose. The witch has been stalking the kids the entire movie and spying on the house with a telescope. She also keeps looking at her crotch for whatever reason. I'm not kidding. She's my favorite thing in the whole movie because I'm never bored when she's on screen. She has a long nose that she wiggles all the time. She's also got some really wild dance moves around the end. When she greets the kids, she's like, watch me charm them, and then proceeds to tell them how she's going to eat them, which I personally think is an excellent way to charm kids, and I will be making good use of it in the future. Then Gretel's suddenly like, she's a witch, after the witch has stated this multiple times in her song, so tops to Gretel for observation. She must have inherited them from her mother. <laughs> so you know the drill. Hansel's put in a cage, and Gretel is made to work. There's a great scene where Hansel and the witch basically fight like bratty kids, and I think it's the best scene in the movie. However, there's also a bit where the witch starts singing and dancing, and she rides her broom nowhere and comes right back for no reason, because they had to have something happen in the instruments, I guess. There are a few things that I personally would have cut out if I'd been an editor, but I'm not sure if film editors existed back then based on what on the movies I've seen. But where the story of Hansel and Gretel, as we know it, is fairly progressive because it's Gretel who shoves the witch in the oven, this film decides that Gretel is going to be useless, and Hansel actually escapes the cage and shoves the witch in. Then their parents find them, everyone is happy. So overall, this movie was an experience. However, for those of you who don't like musicals or opera or think that an hour and 50 minutes is too long, then you're in luck. There is a completely different 1954 stop motion of Hansel and Gretel that takes care of all of these problems. This version is only 10 minutes long and there's no dialogue, just narration. Also, they describe the witch as green-skinned when she's clearly blue. Personally, I prefer the longer version because it's weird enough to be entertaining and Susie and Ginger are in it, which clearly makes it the superior story. Not to mention you'd miss out on the dancing furniture or hear the dad's broom song. And what a tragedy that would be. Thank you once again for listening to me ramble about weird movies. I hope that you had as much fun listening as I had talking about it. Take care out there, y'all.